In this video, we're going to learn how to make outlines using the Layer Effects Studio, all in Affinity Photo on the iPad. This is the second video in my mini 10 part series where I'm looking at the Layer Effects Studio, looking at all the effects one by one. And in this video, we're going to be looking and creating outlines. So let's get into it. As always, we're just going to go into Affinity Photo and we're going to click into our the start of our Sonic project from the last time. And if I just bring up our Sonic image, we're going to look at making these here circles with an outline or a stroke, as it's sometimes called. The left hand side here, we'll go into the shapes tool, which we looked at a few videos ago. If I make a shape at the minute, it's got a little white box there. I've never noticed that before. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, that, that's an odd one, that's the first. At the minute it's coming up black, which which isn't bad for that colour, but what we're going to look at is the yellow circle in the background first. So if we click into this eyedropper tool, we'll pick it yellow. That won't change the colour of the circle. What we need to do first, it's still in black. If we click into the yellow again now, if we change into it, it's come up that white box again, and that's annoying because I've never seen it. And there's it away now. There's it. I'm not sure what's going on there. I haven't come across that problem, but we'll we'll, we'll work away with it because it seems to disappear. If you remember in the shapes video, we're going to make our circle. One finger will keep it in proportion. Two fingers will move it from the center of where I clicked. And three will move it from the center and keep it in proportion. So I'll try to get fairly near the center. Two fingers, three fingers. And I thought that Sorry, three fingers. I thought that was a perfect circle, but it's not. It's actually slightly squashed. So if I click into our circle now, I'll just drag it over, maybe in the midway between the blue outline here. We're just kind of guessing where it is. Where it is down there. And... That's not looking too bad. So if we go into the effects studio and outline. Again, outline's highlighted now. So if we click into outline, we can move the radius up and we'll maybe, again, like always in Affinity Photo, you can drag your finger across or click into it. And for this here, we'll maybe just eyeball it roughly. That's coming in about 33 pixels. There's a few things we can do. We can change the opacity of it. We can change the blending mode. And seeing this is quite dark, it's, it's hard to see. If we change it to a different color, it'll be easier to see the different blending modes. You can see it there a wee bit, especially if I zoom in, overlay. And if you click into the blending mode, you can just bring it back to normal because that's what we want. The alignment. It's currently in the outside of this yellow circle. We can make the black line the center of the circle, or we can make it inside. And then this here fill style, we can do it contour, which means if we have a gradient, I'll, I'll zoom in to explain it better. It'll make it go from one color to the other color, the whole way around it. So it's going from the, the whole outline it's black and it's going into white. If we change this to a gradient, it's a more traditional gradient where we've got black into white and then a solid color. So let me have a wee look at, we'll hide this image. We could make it go into two blues because we'll, we'll maybe do something about that later, but we'll, we'll maybe just for the purposes of this video, make, make that. So if I click into this, and I'm actually just going to move it out of the way for a wee second because what I want to do is go back into the uh, Layer Effects Studio, click on colour, we can change the colour, we can try to eyeball it, but by clicking on the wee eyedropper, we can get the exact blue we're looking for. And that looks really nice. Again, if we wanted to do this contour style, we can click into it and... Again, click on the black. Let me get a wee bit of this dark blue. And then we'll click on the white here. Sorry, back into it. 
clicking the white, clicking the white here, the wee eyedropper, and we'll maybe get a bit of this dark one just to see what happens. We're not seeing anything at the minute because the radius is set to zero. If we just eyeball it, something like that. It's changed our color to white there. We'll, we'll go back into it, click on white, click on white here. So that was maybe quite quick. So I clicked on this white circle to activate it and then clicked on this white circle to activate it. Use the eyedropper tool and we're going to try and get this, this dark blue. Wow, that really looks nice. Uh, I didn't intend doing that in this tutorial. I was just going to make it a solid, a solid blue. But seeing we're trying to make it a wee bit more uh, or a realistic version of this Sonic screen, that looks really nice. I can change it to gradient. And again, it's just going now from dark blue to light. We can do a solid color. But this is really, really nice. That actually nearly makes it feel a wee bit of, 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 a, of an embossed kind of type look. And we'll look at that later on. So if we just drag this into the middle of the screen and we'll move it up. The picture's not maybe exactly in the middle, so just by clicking the edges, we'll move these back into place. And if I hide the sonic layer, you can kind of see where we're going with this. If I put this layer back, so the next layer we need is the blue and the black. And very simply, what we're going to do here is we're going to click into this circle. There's two ways of doing this. One click, we're going to duplicate it. One finger, and we're going to hit duplicate. And now that's duplicated. Two fingers to undo. Two fingers to undo the duplicate. As you can see, there's still one. Or you can go up this wee menu and hit duplicate. And that does the same thing. So I've duplicated the layer. I'm going to hide the bottom one. And then just bring this down roughly to where it's hard to know where the black is at the top and bottom but it's it's easier to know here at the side so very roughly a lot of this is going to be covered by the banner and the text and, and sonic obviously but if we go back into layer effects I think the line below this will just will just hide this way there. I think that's a wee bit smaller in this line. Maybe not by much, but just for the purpose of this video, we will make it a wee bit smaller by going into layer effects, clicking into outline. I'm happy with the blend mode. Opacity 100%. The radius is saying 34.5. We'll maybe bring it down to 30. And that's quite nice just to make it a wee bit smaller and again the alignment that's outside you really notice the difference now center and inside i'm okay with center i'm okay with the contour and by showing the bottom oh before i show the bottom layer we'll actually go into the color studio we'll it's maybe easier just to move this background layer if i, if I move it out of the way because it's this dark, it's this black. It's not quite black, it's just maybe charcoal black. While on the move tool, we can click on our circle, go into the color studio on the eye picker. We've selected the dark color, but we click it again, and that's changed the inside of this. So now, if we go back to the sonic image, it will snap to the edges there. And if we just click on this that doesn't look like it's in the center but if, we'll maybe just make we'll make this dead center and we'll make this dead center by using the snaps that's dead center now our sonic's maybe not dead center but that's okay and that is the very start of the sonic the hedgehog it's starting to take shape now in the last video we used gaussian blur Again, another quick shortcut. If you're on the layer, if you're in the layers studio, just click on the layer effects and that brings up the layer effects studio. So we've got the Gaussian blur there. And in this video, we looked at the outline, also sometimes called the stroke. And what I'll maybe do is bring, click on Sonic layer, bring it to the top and just hide it. 
and it's starting to take shape. It's really starting to take shape. And let me just look at how this outline affects text. We'll maybe hide these few layers. We will bring up our text tool and we'll simply just type Sonic. We'll maybe make it for just for fun. We'll maybe make it as the Super Mario font that I've got pre-installed. This is just a quick, quick wee illustration just for a bit of fun. I mentioned Super Sonic and the Super Mario font. What is going on here today? So we will just go into the studio and we'll we'll kind of make it a Sonic Blue. And again, by going into the effects layer studio, go into outline, clicking into it, and then two fin fingers just kind of moves the, the canvas into place. That Sonic isn't quite centered. That's doing my head on. So we'll just uh, put it in the center, go into layer effects, click on the outline. We'll maybe bring the radius up quite a bit. Because with this example, you'll really see better what the alignment is. So currently it's, if it, that's the opacity, so the alignment's going to go on the outside of this. It's actually quite, this will be quite nice that it's a wee bit C3. You can kind of see what's happening here. Have a click on the inside, or goes in the center, sorry. Goes in the center. And then the, the inside, we'll just bring that back to full. So the outline is, is following the inside of the text, which doesn't look great. Outside doesn't look too bad. Inside's okay, but looks a wee bit messy. Normally with text, you want to do it on the outside. The circles we had earlier, it didn't really matter too much because we could position it. But with text it does. That's maybe a wee bit too big. I'll maybe bring it down to 20 pixels. Or we'll maybe bring it up to 40 pixels so it's quite big. Just so we can see these layer styles a wee bit better. So that's the solid colour. That's kind of cool. Looks a wee bit funky. We'll go into the contour and we'll change it from black. Click on the black. Then the black down here and we'll, we'll make it red. That's, that's, that's really cool actually. And if I change the fill style to gradient, you can see it's just matching the gradient here. Red and a white. Keeping it solid color. And then the contour. That looks that looks really cool. And again, that's on the outside. If we make it in center, it clips so much of the text. Inside clips too much. It looks a bit daft. But that doesn't look too bad. And we'll see how the blending modes work with this. It'll maybe make the blending modes a wee bit clearer. So as it darkened, it's just affecting the outline here. So I'm just scrolling through them all. Some there's a bigger difference than others. And again, if I click into it, we can just very quickly just scroll down these, which is nice. Oh, there was interesting interesting looks and we're just gonna bring it back up to normal and there we have it don't tell anyone i used mario text for sonic and my son found out he would he dad what are you doing but uh we haven't installed the sonic sonic font in yet and we're not working on the sonic uh picture just yet or the sonic font that looks absolutely awful but uh i'll just delete that wee layer and that'll do us for this video. So there you have it. Feel free to like this video, please subscribe, and if you want to, leave a comment below. I read and reply to each and every one. Thanks for watching, hope you have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.